In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automate your reporting and let ChatGPT analyze data sets for you on a regular basis, drafting reports, and then sending them over to yourself or to your teammates through your communication channel, such as Slack or Microsoft Teams. We are going to be using Zapier, as you can see. And on this channel, if you are not new, you know that I love everything about Zapier as well as AI automations. So if you are interested in learning more, then definitely subscribe down below. We are going to start with our trigger and we are going to search for scheduled by Zapier. Here. We want to run these reports on a regular basis and in this case we are going to assume we want to run them each month. So in the event you want to go and choose every month and then you can specify the exact day of the specific month that you want to run the report on. So if I click on that one you can see that you can choose from the first day all the way to the last day of the month. And so here I would recommend you not to choose one or two because in many cases the data sets that you can download from any other apps or softwares are lagging a few days because they are still collecting data for the previous days. So here I would recommend you to choose five and we assume that we are going to have everything available to us and the data set is going to be ready to be analyzed on the fifth day of each month. So in this case, you can also choose the specific time of the day when you want to run the report. And in this case, we're going to be posting it to our channel on Slack to other teammates so they can get the analysis each month. So let's say we would want to create these reports at 10 a.m. in the morning. We can then continue. We can also test this trigger. And as you can see, today is Saturday when I'm making this video. So it works and we can continue with this selected record. And right now we are going to set up our first action. And in this case, we are going to be using Google Sheets as our data database that ChatGPT can then analyze the data from and draft the reports for us. I'm going to choose Google Sheets and in the event you want to scroll down and go into the section called search and then you want to choose this one, get many spreadsheet rows. As you can see, it says returns many rows, 500 maximum as a single JSON value and then flat rows. That's exactly what we need because ChatGPT is actually able to then read the JSON value that is going to include all the data. So you want to choose this one and you want to continue. And here you want to connect your Google Sheets with your Zapier. It's super simple. You just use your credentials for your Google account and then you log in and then you are good to go. I have already done that so we can continue. And Right now you want to specify the action a little bit more so in this case you want to specify your drive as you can see i have one it's called my google drive so i'm going to choose that one and right now we have other required fields one of them is spreadsheet and one of them is worksheet so just so you understand how everything is going to work firstly you are going to create your own spreadsheet and so you can go ahead and create a blank one if i click on the one that i have created you can see i have already inserted some data here so i can show you how the whole reporting is going to work in practice and so here you have to know that there is a difference between spreadsheets and worksheets so when you create your spreadsheet over here in your google drive you are going to name it and in this case i named it monthly reporting database i also put in brackets spreadsheet and so from here i wanted to show you what spreadsheet actually is spreadsheet is actually the top level and the name of the whole file Whereas on the bottom of the page, you can see you have your worksheets. So in this case, I have just one and you should also create just one. And when you are working with Zapier, it's really important to know the difference between spreadsheets and worksheets because there are different actions and triggers for spreadsheets as well as for worksheets. And so here, what you want to do is that you want to go to spreadsheet and you want to find the one that you have just created. In this case, it would be the monthly reporting database. You can name it the same. The point is that it's always going to be the same database that ChatGPT is going to use for the reporting. So in this case, you just choose the one that you have just created. You want to also choose the monthly reporting database worksheet. Then in the columns, I would recommend you to leave it from A to Z. This is going to include all the columns. Then another required field is the row count. Here, what you want to do is you want to definitely change this one. As you have seen, there is a limit for parsing the data. So in this case, this action actually takes a maximum of 500 rows, which should be sufficient for monthly monthly reporting. And so this is definitely not for some huge data analysis where you have thousands of rows. So you want to definitely go and increase this to 500 to the maximum. In the first row, you also want to change this from two to one. And the reason why is that you also want to include the headers of your columns. So you want to make sure you have headers inside your table or inside your database. And this is super important because the JSON value or the JSON file that ChatGPT is going to analyze for us, it needs to have headers so that ChatGPT can understand what the 
values actually mean. And then the last one, you can leave it on default on no. This basically tells you whether you want to continue with this. If there are no rows and nothing is found in your database, maybe you deleted something, then you don't want to continue with your next actions. And so you can leave it on default with no. We are going to then continue. And right now we are going to test whether this actually works and whether we can connect to our database or in other words, our spreadsheet. So I'm going to test this step and yeah, it works. So we got the green check mark. And if you scroll down, you can see that we have different rows. And so each row has its own values. Here you can see in the first row, we have the headers. And then if you go to second row, we actually are starting to get the values. The most important thing is that you want to scroll down and then you are going to find something called row rows. And this is basically the JSON values that includes all the rows as well as all the columns put together so ChatGPT can understand them. So right now we know that it works and we can continue with the plus button and add another step over here. And in the second action, we are going to use ChatGPT to analyze our data set as well as draft our report. So you want to go ahead and search for ChatGPT. Then in the event, you want to go and choose the conversation. We want to send the prompt to ChatGPT. We are going to continue. And then you want to connect your ChatGPT account. I have a video how you can quickly do that. I'm going to link it down below. But you just simply use API key that you generate on OpenAI on your account. And then you place it here inside Zapier. I'm going to continue. And then here we want to specify more settings about our action, including our prompt. And so for this, just to save time, I'm going to go inside my database where I store all my AI automations with the triggers as well as the prompts. And here I'm going to try to replicate this one, which is starting with schedule by Zapier. And then we have the Google Sheets, which we have already done. And right now we are on the third one, which is the ChatGPT block. And here I'm going to copy the prompt I have to use. And I'm going to paste it inside the user message. And so here, if you want to know how you can write very effective prompts, go and check out the first link in the description down below, where I put together a totally free no junk resource, where I show you the 3P framework to write effective prompts inside Zapier when you are using your ChatGPT blog. But firstly, we set up a little bit of context for ChatGPT, who are a senior data analyst responsible for delivering in-depth insights from routine exploratory data analysis for your department. Then the dataset parameter. So here's where the automation is actually happening. We know where the data is going to be stored all the time. So we want to go back to our Google Sheet action. And in this case, we want to scroll down and search for the row rows variable that I mentioned before. That is going to include all your columns as well as all the rows, which is perfect for running reports like this. Is. So I'm going to choose this one. And then next I set up a parameter called details. This is not important and you don't have to do this, but I thought that in this case, this would be interesting to set up. So I'm writing down, if you receive the exact data match, write a short announcement that the report has not been generated as the data set has not been updated with new data. So remember, we are going to have one static database where we are going to always have the data prepared prior to running this app. So you always want to make sure that you update your Google spreadsheet, the same exact one. So so you can download it from somewhere or maybe you receive it from your colleague and then you just copy and paste it directly inside the same spreadsheet. Let's say that we forgot to update it or we got sick and we couldn't work. We don't want to run the same report once again because then our colleagues or teammates might get confused. And so then I want to generate a response where we announce that the new report has not been generated successfully. And then lastly, I write the exact prompt, conduct a comprehensive analysis of the following data set, then generate a a thorough analytical report, including your key findings, patterns, and recommendations. The second thing you want to set up is your models. In this case, I would recommend you to use ChatGPT4 because we are really looking for generating comprehensive reports as well as recommendations, some insights, and trends. So I'm going to go and change this to GPT4. And then one of the most important thing here is that you want to set up the memory key. So here I'm going to write down monthly reporting and you can write anything here, it doesn't matter. But the main advantage of this is that ChatGPT is going to remember all the prior chats. So for example, if you remember inside the details parameter over here, I told ChatGPT that if you receive the same data, which it actually receives inside our conversation because I included over here with this variable, it should remember that and it should not generate the same report. So basically you can think about memory key as storing the chats within one conversation inside ChatGPT. And then in the username, assistant name and assistant instructions, I'm going to keep this uh, the same and maybe I'm just going to change this one to you are a helpful data analyst and then max tokens I'm going to leave it on 250 and then temperature and top P I'm going to leave it on default as well I have videos on my channel you can check them out where I explain you quickly what they mean but basically they are allowing you to be more creative or more random if you want you can 
actually leave them as they are and then you can continue. And right now we are going to test this, whether it actually is going to generate a report for us. So I'm going to test this step and yeah, it worked. So we got the green check mark over here. And if we scroll down in the response under content, the whole report is stored there. So let's have a look. We got a title over here, comprehensive analysis of revenue growth with a small description at the start. Then we have some key findings over here, patterns, recommendations. And then at the end, we have the conclusion as well. All right, so right now we can continue with our third action. In this case, we want to put everything together and distribute it to our communication channel. So that can be your Slack, Microsoft Teams, or you can send this over via email if you want to. You can send it over to your colleagues, teammates, or before posting anywhere, you can have this sent over to yourself before you actually post it somewhere. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate this on Slack, but remember all the steps are pretty much the same for any communication channel. So I'm going to search for Slack and in the event section, you want to go and choose send channel message. You also have the option to send this as a direct message if you want to, but we are going to go with the channel message. I'm going to continue. And then here you want to connect your Slack. It's super simple. Once again, you just logged in with your credentials and then you give permission to Zapier to use it. I've already done that. So I'm going to continue. The first thing we want to set up is our channel. So if I click on that one, you can see we have four different channels over here. And so just so you know how it looks inside Slack, you can see I have four different channels over here and I have created a new one called weekly reporting. This is going to be the one where I always want to post these reports on a monthly or even weekly basis. So I'm going to choose the weekly reporting channel and then inside the message text, you can right now include the dynamic variables. So each time the report is going to be generated, you want to send this over to your channel. So we are going to go inside our conversation with ChatGPT and you want to go and scroll down and find the reply dynamic variable. I'm going to choose this one and then you have many different settings that you can set up. So for example, you can send this as a bot. If you specify no, this message will appear to come from you for example so i'm going to keep this on yes then you can give your bot a name if you want so i could name it differently but i'm going to leave it zapier you can also change the icon of the bot that is going to send out your message you can also include a link to the zap you can also attach image by urls you can also set up auto expand links so i'm going to keep it on yes link usernames and channel names i'm going to keep it on yes as well you can also schedule the message to be posted later include some files specify the thread inside Slack. And then lastly, if you want to send this as a thread message, you can leave everything on the same settings as they were predefined by Zapier and we can go and continue. And right now we are going to test this in action whether it works. So I'm going to test this step. A message was sent to Slack about one second ago. So let's actually go to our Slack and double check. And yeah, it works. So inside our channel in weekly reporting, you can see right now we have a new message here. It's from Zapier and the icon is also Zapier. Remember, these are the settings you can change. And then we have the whole report generated over here. So we have the title, then we have the key findings we have the trends as well as the recommendations and then at the end we also have the link so if i click on that one if you are locked inside your zapier you're going to be redirected to your zap builder so you can change something if you want now the last thing you have to realize is that this is always going to be run on the fifth day of each month so we want to make sure that before that deadline you always update your database with the prior monthly data so what you can do you either receive the data from somebody or you can download it from somewhere let's say from LinkedIn analytics. And then what you do is that before the zap is run, which if you remember is on the fifth day of each month, you're going to just go and open a new Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file, and you're going to import it directly here or to avoid creating a new spreadsheet because then it's not going to work. You just can copy and paste it. So I'm just going to delete this one and then paste new data over here. And then I know that when this zap is going to be run after three, four days, it's going to draft the report, prepare it for me as well as posted on the fifth day of each month. So just make sure that you always update it. And that's maybe also the reason why you want to choose fifth day instead of the first day. You might not have the data for the previous month because it might be still processing. But the second reason is that you still have some time so you can always update it before the report is run. If you forget to change the data set, ChatGPT is actually going to receive exactly the same JSON value. It's going to then create an announcement for your team that the data set was not updated. So let's actually show you how that looks 
like. So inside our ChatGPT block, I'm going to go to test. And because we set up our memory key, ChatGPT should remember that it has generated this report for this specific data set. So I'm going to retest this action. You can see that we scroll down and under response over here, you can see we got a nice announcement over here. Since this data set is identical to one that we have previously analyzed, there is no new information available to create an updated report. And then we also get some other information as well. So then you create this short announcement to anyone if you forget to update your spreadsheet or if you maybe get sick and you just can't update it. And so in this case, it remembered that the JSON value was identical to the one that we tested previously. Last thing you want to do is to name your Zap. So in this case, I'm going to name it with the order of the apps. And so I know and have an idea about what this Zap actually does. So I have Google Sheets, ChatGPT and Slack, and then you're good to go. So you can either publish it over here or in this corner over here. Now, remember writing ChatGPT prompts inside Zapier is a little bit different. So if you are interested in learning how you can do that, I put together a totally free no junk resource where I explain you the three pre framework for creating effective prompts inside Zapier. So you can find it in the first link in the description down below, along with my AI automation database, where I store all my AI automations with the exact order of the apps, the triggers, as well as the exact prompts that you can just copy and paste as you have seen in this video, as well as with the action you want to perform with your chat GPT output. You can find that in the first link in the description down below as well. If you're interested in more automations that you can perform inside your business to automate different tasks, go and check this video over here, where I show you four different examples, including your CRM systems, as well as forms on your website where you catch your leads. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.